Hurricane warnings along the Baja California coast of Mexico tonight. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. September 8th. Right now we still have three hurricanes active in the Western Hemisphere and now another edition of Tropical Storm 14W which is getting stronger as it heads towards the northwest towards the eastern coasts of Asia. Earl strengthening, Danielle soon to be on the way out and Kay headed for Mexico. Day 100 of Atlantic hurricane season, Earl is approaching Bermuda, won't be too far until it passes uncomfortably close there. Danielle still a category 1 and two areas of interest, one with a high chance of development in the main development region and another one with a low chance on the coast of Africa. In the Eastern Pacific it's just K right now, although that's enough to keep us busy as it could swipe the uh, western coast of the central Baja California Peninsula with substantial hurricane force winds in as little as 12 to 18 hours. In the western Pacific we're still following 14W, the remnants of Hinnomnor are still going way up the coast of Russia and two areas of interest that have a low chance of development over the next five days but still we've marked them something to monitor for the time being along with that tropical storm which is the main threat. In the Indian Ocean chances seem to be going down now for a tropical cyclone in the Bay of Bengal uh, but it has been marked as Invest 90B and we're still giving it a slim chance of forming as it heads towards uh, eastern India. Let's check some current satellite imagery across the Atlantic and you'll notice that Earl is becoming more better defined. Uh, it's got some shape about it which is quite curious. It's displaced towards the north and east. There's not very little on the southwestern side. Danielle looking a bit more dishevelled recently uh, as it is entering colder sea surface temperatures. And K, whilst it hasn't looked the best on infrared imagery, it's still not looking too bad on the other views. Uh, there it is approaching the coast of Mexico and certainly the moisture pulse there quite visible all the way up into the United States now over New Mexico and Arizona. Here is some visible imagery this evening as we reach the late part of the day. Uh, K still looking rather impressive when you look at that visible imagery and certainly it's uh, size is something to seriously consider when the storm moves through even if it does weaken quite a bit more uh, we could still be looking at very high rain rates now um, it's peaked as a high-end or borderline category 2 storm depending on who you listen to um, which is good compared to what it could have been it could have been a strong category 3 uh, but still a threat to land here's Earl you can see on this imagery how it's uh, coming together it would appear uh, Bermuda is uh, somewhere to the northern side of that uh, I don't think they're quite inside the storm's influence yet but it must be close um, and way up there you can see Danielle starting to lose it a little bit on the enhanced infrared as you can see also getting a little bit stretchy as it heads towards the uh, uh, the end of the coverage area there in GOES 16 and also that other area of interest looking pretty damn good on that infrared imagery uh, certainly has that tropical cyclone look about it and that other area behind it which is just emerging off the coast of Africa something to monitor but that wave it looks to me as if it's going to be our next tropical cyclone. Western Pacific uh, Tropical Storm 14 has been detaching away from the other areas that it was trying to uh, fight against. Uh, it has gone a little bit stronger as far as we can tell and has been moving a little bit towards the southwest recently. It will end up turning northwestward shortly and head towards the southern uh, Ryukyu Islands of Japan once again and could threaten the east coast of China. Indian Ocean today looks like this. We're still watching those disturbances and those clouds in the eastern part of the Indian Ocean for that potential development but no real signs of activity there yet southern hemisphere looking rather quiet and down here towards the Australian region some uh, decent convection blowing up in the uh, higher latitudes down towards New South Wales uh, but elsewhere it's looking pretty dormant across the whole region um, although a little front moving in on the western side as well so Australia front after front I've been watching that for quite a while 
Let's check global sea surface temperatures then. Uh, so here is K, it's just about to exit 26 degrees Celsius waters, that's the threshold required for tropical cyclone development usually. So it's really going to have an uphill struggle from here on in. Earl is in a good position right now, it's due south of Bermuda there and it's got 28 to 30 degrees Celsius waters possibly just ahead of it. And Danielle is just about to enter the graveyard, uh, it is already over only 24 or 25 degrees Celsius waters so it's definitely on its way out. North Indian Ocean is very warm if that storm decides to develop and take advantage of that area with over 30 degrees Celsius waters. Where this new tropical storm is, there's still a bit of a cool patch after Hinnomnor, uh, but still decent temperatures to work with over 30 degrees where it is right now. It will drop to around 27 and then back up to around 29 through the Ryukyu Islands and then tail off as it reaches the coast of China, but still 26 degrees all the way up the coast past Shanghai. So it's certainly got a chance to have quite a lot of power still. And here is the sea surface temperature anomalies, the Philippine Sea in general above average, the Atlantic well above average in the subtropical zones which is where both of these storms are. You may even see a little cool pool there from Danielle and from where Earl is right now from its point of view slightly above average and where K is it is a little above average uh, so it's got just a tad bit more time. Look at the oceanic heat content across the Atlantic and it's still building right now. It must be very close to peak at this uh, moment in time. And in the Western Pacific looking very powerful as well if storms enter that area. And 14W is on the edge of that right now. Eastern Pacific uh, still quite lacking and to be honest it looks like it's peaked and maybe going back down now. Let's check some computer models then. This is what the GFS has in store for Danielle right up there. Earl, a strong hurricane possibly getting to high end category 3 or even category 4. And those two systems behind it don't really develop into much. The first one may be a short lived tropical storm. The second one doesn't really do anything at all. There's that first one once again. And the second one I can't really see. What happens to Danielle's remnants? Well they swirl around interacting with another extratropical system. And the remnants of Danielle end up uh, passing pretty close to Spain and Portugal. This is K, landfall there as a hurricane that's quite clear and then it moves continues up the coast and even tropical storm conditions may be felt in Southern California. A tropical storm watch has been issued all the way up to the border and I'm not sure what the last time was that that happened and the next uh, and after that the storm will uh, pivot round towards the west and eventually do a u-turn and turn back towards the southeast uh, but still a chance of tropical storm conditions on the Channel Islands or indeed in the mainland of California. Crikey! In the Western Pacific here is 14W uh, gradually turning westwards and then northwestwards and becoming a substantial typhoon according to the GFS model. It's been quite consistent with its intensity being a high end category 2 or a category 3 and entering the South China Sea weakening a little bit due to slow movement and down to category 1 status but this just reminds us once again of Hinnomnor just a few days ago and another storm going through exactly the same area there at a similar intensity although not with the same size. Indian Ocean looking out for that area of interest. Where is it? Anywhere to be seen? GFS still has a little something making landfall there on day three or four. Um, I think it's day three uh, in West Bengal, I think that is by that point, uh, just to the west of Kolkata. So that's looking interesting still, uh, but low chance of that happening. GFS is by far the most aggressive model regarding that forecast. Let's look at the potential rainfall that we could see, first of all from the Western Pacific a tropical storm that is likely to become a typhoon later on and you can see there the reds and then the pink areas, the red zones that's over 10 inches of rain, 250 millimeters, the pink areas 15 inches that's nearly 400 millimeters and you'll see when we find out the numbers there 13 14 inches on the southern Ryukyu Islands um, the Ayama Islands in particular that's over 300 millimeters if that happens and even in the eastern coast of China north of Shanghai around 11 inches of rain there as well which is nearly uh, 300 millimeters and 8 inches in Shanghai itself 200 millimeters something to watch out for towards the end of that five day period that is so we're looking by the middle of the week next week when those rainfall amounts will be coming through that area along with potentially a typhoon. 
And here are the rainfall estimates for the Baja California Peninsula and into Southern California even uh, near the Salton Sea possibly getting up to four or five inches of rain that's over 100 millimeters and for parts of the Baja California Peninsula quite a lot more getting up towards eight inches maybe even approaching 10 there look 10.2 in one location there and 10.1 250 millimeters of rain there and certainly with high rain rates will come the potential for flash flooding certainly in these areas which are usually quite dry and barren um, we often get issues when storms come through this way and this would probably be the strongest hurricane in the central part and northern part of Baja California in some time I'm not sure when it would have been last but uh, it certainly feels like it's been a while at least and even up towards Los Angeles potentially two inches of rain up there as well longer range day 5 to 10 well this is a look at what happens to Earl uh, Earl does a little circle around um, Newfoundland eventually and then eventually turns eastwards and still barely holding on with tropical storm force winds it's well post tropical by that point and heads towards Europe just thought we'd show what happens to Earl nothing else showing up on the Atlantic radar in that period of time you can't really see anything forming down there there's a little system that decides to become an extra tropical low it would seem but nothing out of the ordinary Eastern Pacific over this period of time as well let's take a look looks like we have a new tropical storm that tries to form towards the middle to end part of that 10 day period and quite quickly moves into coastal Mexico a rather small system and then at the end of that loop 10 day period looks like there might be two systems trying to form so the Eastern Pacific certainly not giving up with its uh, desire to be above average against all odds this year and certainly looking like we might get some more storms Western Pacific, so the extended track of 14W there, taking it through the coast of China, very close to Shanghai, and actually staying out to sea for a little bit there before moving right up the coast there and eventually moving inland. Could still be tropical for quite a bit of that. Uh, and then a massive storm typhoon developing after that towards the later part of the period. There is less certainty over that. And also another storm way out to sea and possibly two storms way out over towards the international dateline. And one of them looks like it might even be a hurricane crossing back into the Central Pacific, which would be remarkable. Uh, that's the five to 10 day period. Uh, anyway, that's the important stuff done with. You can scar scan this barcode and it will take you to the Force 13 store where we have all kinds of stuff going on, including full season and individual animations on request and the still waiting for Hone t-shirt. Well, then entering the Silly Range, this is day 10 through 16. You can see two tropical storms forming in the Eastern Pacific. One short-lived, the other one stalls for a bit, becomes larger and then heads towards the Baja California Peninsula, but ultimately turns back towards the west and then eventually southwest. And so is not a threat. Uh, what happens to that other system? Does it potentially hold on to a low pressure in the Gulf of Mexico? We're sort of clutching at straws there by that point very long range there is a little thing in there though just to remind you it's been pretty much a year now just short of two weeks since we last had a gulf of mexico storm the largest such gap in 45 years in the western pacific we have a big typhoon moving through past japan uh, doesn't really affect them that much though and a very powerful extra tropical system through the bering sea as well that would be a sight to behold and then that other storm to the east dies off rather quickly and certainly open season for the open seas of the western pacific and possibly another system in its uh, trail there after that big typhoon as well so who knows what we might see in September in the Western Pacific. Eyes peeled. Well then on this day, September 8th, 1900, one of the largest and uh, most notorious hurricane tragedies in history, the Galveston Hurricane, which completely decimated the island of Galveston on September 8th, 1900. It still gets talked about excessively today in historical literature and in our minds. Uh, thousands, I think it was 12,000 people who died in that storm, many thousands at least. Two other storms were active in the eastern Atlantic, a typhoon clearing the Philippines and a tropical depression way out to sea in the western Pacific. Back in the modern age, today, the next name on the Atlantic naming list is Fiona. Could it be another weak tropical storm like the last two? 
In the Eastern Pacific, the next name is Leicester. And in the Central Pacific, we're still waiting for Hone. In the Western Pacific, it looks like we're about to get Moifa. It should really be named by this point, but so far it hasn't. And in the North Indian Ocean, we're expecting Citrang at some point soon as well. Looking towards the Southern Hemisphere, the next name is Darien in the Australian region. Southwest Indian Ocean starts with Ashley, and in the South Pacific, we'll be looking out for Harley. That's all for tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. We'll be back again tomorrow night.